Hi everybody, it's uh, Jack Miller from SEDS ASU Rock 2 Division, and in this episode I'm going to show you how to do a dual deployment rocket um, instead of the single deployment that we did in the last video. And what I'm going to do to start out with that is I'm going to add a body tube. So I added a body tube right now, it automatically puts it down here. Now I don't really want it to be down there. I want it to actually be in this upper stage so I don't have to mess around with all these fins and stuff. And like I showed you earlier in the uh, introduction, you can actually take these components and I'm going to move it up here, right below the nose cone. So you can see it, it popped this little guy up right over here. And I'm also going to take this parachute, stick it in there, in the body tube. I'm going to take the shock cord, stick it in there. And the APRA, I'm actually going to take, I'm going to stick it up in the nose cone because that's where I wanted it earlier and I didn't change that. Come on, get up there. Okay, everything's up there. I'm going to have to mess around with some of the links real quick just to make sure they fit inside here. Because every time you move these components, it's going to save this position relative to, and it's going to you know, make it relative to that component, which might mess up some of your stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease this body tube length because we didn't want it that large. Um, and then I'm going to take this length and I'm going to increase it so that our parachute and our shock cord is going to fit inside of it. Okay, so this is a, right now Open Rocket still accepts this. We haven't really made it dual deployment yet. Um, one of the things you have to add for dual deployment that you know you, typically I've always seen is you have to add a coupler and so that your rocket has somewhere to split apart and it'll stay together during flight. So we're gonna add a coupler. I clicked on coupler and I was on this component so it populates that spot right there. The outer diameter, it's already automatically calculated, it's 38 millimeters, inner diameter, so right now that's an issue. You can't have a zero thickness coupler. So we're gonna change that to 36 just for fun. Okay, that was 26, we don't want that. Change it to 36, so we got a pretty thin coupler. It's about a millimeter on each side. It might not be realistic, but just for the purposes of this video. So length, because it's a 42 millimeter rocket, we're gonna do 42, let's see if this works. We're gonna do 42 times two. And it works, so you get 84 millimeters. That's something, kind of a unique little tool you can use. You can actually do math in here so you don't have to think about it. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna do the position relative to that guy. We're gonna change this to exactly 42 millimeters so it sits right in the middle, okay? And let's see, bottom of the computer, component. we're gonna change this to fiberglass so everything's accurate. And so right now you can see you have two body tubes. Over here we have this body tube and we have this body tube. When you have a coupler, um, typically you're going to have something called a switch band, which is like a really small body tube and that kind of prevents this coupler from having to be glued into this stage, which might cause issues when you're trying to push out the parachute or something like that. But so that's something you can do. I'm going to add a switch band real quick, just to be fun. Yeah, insert there. Okay. Right, so you can see it added a huge switch band. We're definitely going to change that because we don't want it to be that large. Um, body tube length. We're going to change it to like half an inch because we don't want it to be that big. So you can see I add this little switch band right here, which is pretty good. So then we have this little switch band uh, right here. This switch band doesn't really do anything. Uh, let me change this tube coupler length just a little bit so we can have uh, 38 millimeters on each side or four, 42 millimeters on each side. So this is our length right now. Um, let's go with do 10 millimeters. I don't know how much. All right, and then we're gonna change this to 50 or 47. And did I do the math right? Yeah. I don't know why we'll change to 50, whatever. Okay, so it sits relatively inside the middle. Um, we're gonna take this guy, just for simplicity, we're gonna make it a little bit longer so our shock cord sits outside of the coupler. And typically in this coupler, that's where you're going to have your, your avionics so that you can deploy the um, the main parachute that'll be in here and the drug parachute that'll typically be down here. So now we have to add another parachute. We're going to add a little tiny parachute. Um, we're going to change any of these things because uh, I showed you how to do it earlier. It's going to be 11 inch parachute. It's going to be pretty small. And we're going to change the deployment though. So we're going to change it to Apogee. So that's what we really want. I'm going to change the package length to make it a little more realistic. And we're going to change where it's located. Okay, so we change the package length and I'm going to add some shock cord right here. So I changed the shock cord. Let's just change it to, I don't know, let's add like four feet or something like that. Change the length of this guy. Package diameter, we're going to make it like, I don't know, an inch and a quarter just to make it look cool. Okay. So there you go. We have both of those set in there. 
And this guy, this drogue parachute, is set to go off at Apogee. And if you remember from the first video, our main parachute is actually set to go off at Apogee as well. But we don't want that. So now we're gonna actually gonna take it and we're gonna change it to lower, we're gonna change it to specific altitude during descent. Let me change it to there, and let's say the altitude we want to be, uh, let's see, we're going up to 3,850 feet. Let's change it to 500 feet, just for demonstration purposes. You might not want to do this in real life, but we're going to change it to 500 feet. And once we've modified that, um, this is, you're typically just going to get the rocket, um, and you can convert it to dual deployment. And just make sure everything lines up with how your rocket's been designed. Double check the stability to make sure everything's going to be okay, and that nothing's going to go haywire right now. So everything looks in order. Um, we could add electronics in here, but for demonstrations of the video, we're just gonna go ahead, go over to motors and ignition, double check that, and then we're gonna go over to flight simulations. So you can see, because we changed the rocket, these simulations are now, uh, they're yellow right now. So there's no simulation data available. But what we're gonna do now is new simulation. We're going to have the simulation, we have all the presets in here. Simulate and plot, and we're going to change this from stability versus time, because you don't need to see that again, to vertical motion versus time. Oops, vertical motion versus time. And we hit plot, and you can see here's our rocket. It launches up here. Apogee recovery device deployment occurs right here, perfectly at Apogee, which might not typically happen in the real world. But then you're slowly going down on your drogue parachute until you hit about 500 feet where the recovery device deployment occurs. And you can see this is your main. It's going to cause it to decrease in vertical speed, basically and you're gonna slowly drift to Earth, which is be a lot better than having main go off here and then slowly drift down. You're gonna have a really fast drogue that's gonna come out, and you're gonna typically go down at 100 feet per second, and right about here, you're gonna go anywhere between 15 to 30 feet per second, so your rocket doesn't impact really hard. Um, let's see, hit close, and one thing I didn't show you guys yet is a lot of this information right here is pretty helpful, so you don't have to look at the plot to get it. We're gonna go ahead and expand this. Well, I didn't need to expand that one. But this gives you velocity off rod, um, apogee, velocity at deployment. So that's how fast you're going when it's deployed. Optimum delay, the optimum delay, delay, optimum delay for your parachutes. Max velocity, 725 feet per second. Max acceleration, blah, blah, blah. And this one is an important one, ground hit velocity. So that's showing that our main parachute deployed will hit the ground at about 16.2 feet per second. And if you want to find how fast your drogue, your, your parachute's going, or your rocket's going with your drogue deployed, you can go back to that simulation and you can check out the, um, here, let's just run this simulation, but let's plot it. You can go back here and you can check um, the line that shows you your vertical velocity right now. So this blue one's vertical velocity. And you can see it's actually going down pretty fast right now. It's going about 250 feet per second, which is incredibly fast. So you'd probably want to increase the size of your drogue parachute if you're going to be doing that. But that's just kind of an introduction of how to do dual deployment. You'll typically do that with your more your rockets that are going to go really high, or if you just don't want to chase your rocket very far, which chasing it's not very, you know, sometimes it's fun, but sometimes if it's drifting for miles and miles, you don't really want to chase it out. Um, so the next video, we're going to show you actually how to do a two-stage rocket, which is one of the more difficult things we had to master for the university student rocketry competition. So uh, stay tuned for that video, and I uh, hope you guys have a good day. Bye.